Hey, what's going on? Dodgers Nation. Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Will Ryan Pepio be the Dodgers number five starter? We're going to dive into that in just a second. But quick reminder for all things Dodger baseball all season long. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel and you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comments section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Should Ryan Pepio be the Dodgers number five starter with Tony Gonson out with injury? Let me know down below. And for our latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So one of the biggest questions remaining for the Dodgers heading into the season is who will be LA's number five starter? With Tony Gonson out to start the season due to an ankle injury, LA will be deciding between Ryan Pepio, Michael Grove, and Andre Jackson could receive some consideration. Now, in his career, two years of big league action across 21 to thirds innings, Jackson's posted a 2.11 ERA, a 3.38 FIP. The whip is high at 13.59, but he's looked really good this spring. Jackson has appeared in parts of four games, allowing one run in seven and two thirds innings of work. He's posted a 1.17 ERA, a 1.04 whip. Opponents are hitting 241 against him. He has 10 strikeouts to one walk, and he's definitely caught the attention of Dave Roberts and this organization, and he has impressed to the point where he is in the mix for this fifth starter swingman role that the Dodgers have. Now, last season, the feeling was that Jackson had kind of regressed. He had a five ERA across 75 and two-thirds innings in 21 games. He made 19 starts for AAA OKC. He also appeared in four games for the Dodgers last season, nine and two-thirds innings, had a 1.86 ERA. The whip was high at 13.45. And then back in 2021, when he made his big league debut at the age of 25, he definitely showed some promise. He looked like he could be solid for this team, appearing in three games, 11 and two-thirds innings, had a 2.31 ERA array of 411 FIP and look as of right now he's not projecting as even a middle of your rotation starter but his numbers do indicate that even though it's a small sample size he can be effective at the big league level look he appeared to close out the game for the Dodgers when they set their record on October 2nd he went three scoreless innings gave up two hits struck out three and he recorded the Dodgers only three innings save of 2022 so he definitely had his moments and he also has an impressive change of last Last season, he threw it 53.8% of the time. It averaged 84.9 miles per hour. Opponents hit 167 off of it. His fastball averaged 95.1 miles per hour. He threw it 36.5% of the time. Opponents hit 375 off it. So if you can locate his fastball better, he can absolutely be a guy that can come up and contribute. And the most important thing is he was far more effective pitching in the show last year than he was pitching down in AAA. So maybe he's just ready to make that jump. Maybe he's had a taste of big league action and he just can't quite get that same level of intensity and adrenaline down at AAA. Maybe he needs to pitch on the big stage at the big league level. And then also, when you consider the fact that Daniel Hudson isn't going to be ready for opening day, hey, Andre Jackson starts to make sense. So don't forget about Dre. And then, of course, there's Ryan Pepio. So far this spring, Pep's allowed two runs and nine innings of work with 13 punch outs to three walks. He's posted a 2 ERA, a 1.33 whip. Opponents are hitting 250 off of him. And the number you focus on for Ryan Pepio is those command numbers, is the strikes. The strikes are up. The walks per nine is three right now, down from 6.7 last season. So he is showing improvement in his control and his command of the strike zone. And that is the most important thing. Because last season, he appeared in nine games. He made seven starts. He pitched in 36 and a third innings. He allowed 20 26 hits, 15 runs, 14 were earned, and he posted a 3-4-7 ERA with 42 strikeouts to 27 walks. He also gave up six home runs. So there's no doubt about it. Ryan Pepio's stuff is electric. His stuff is filthy. It's just a matter of harnessing it. And also, he's been more effective with the slider this spring, and that is going to open things up for him because we know that changeup is elite. We know the fastball is still going to play up if he locates it, but having that slider, which looks more like his older slider. You see it has more depth. It has sharper break to the left. And as he continues to gain more confidence in that pitch and have it become more of a regular part of his arsenal, that's going to keep hitters off balance. Because we know if you have a filthy changeup, that alone is not going to get it done 
as a starting pitcher. So he realized that this offseason and put a lot of work in. And, and you've seen during spring training, Dave Roberts has definitely been in Ryan Pepio's ear, giving him confidence. And I asked Doc about Ryan Pepio this spring and his development, and here's what he had to say. Yeah, and I saw you were very excited about Ryan Pepio a few days ago. What have you seen from him so far this spring? Uh, Ryan's uh, working on, uh, obviously, the delivery, which he did a lot of this winter. Um, the pace of play, his tempo um, has been really good. And uh, the misses aren't as bad. And he understand, he's understanding kind of how his delivery works. So you heard Doc talk about Ryan's delivery, and that has been one of the big improvements for Pep this offseason is he has cleaned up that delivery. He has improved some things mechanically, and that's all going to translate to throwing more strikes, and that is the number one key for Ryan Pepio. So if you compare the three, Andre Jackson, Ryan Pepio, and Michael Grove, there's no doubt about it. Ryan Pepio has the highest ceiling. He has the biggest upside. And last year, they maximized those five options where they sent him up and they sent him down. He has two option years remaining, but I think when you look at this season and you look at this rotation and you consider that Tony Gonson's already dealing with some injuries and Noah Syndergaard, he's looked good at times. Other times, you're wondering what you're going to get. Is he going to return to form? We know Clayton Kershaw's dealt with injuries over the past few seasons. I think if you're looking at Ryan Pepio, a guy that has nothing else to prove at the AAA level, save for maybe reducing his home run rate and continue to throw strikes really how much better can he get down there so I think if you're the Dodgers and you're considering which guy can potentially help us more down the line whether it be earlier in the season later in the season the postseason or next year if you're truly all in on Ryan Pepio what he needs to see is himself having success at the big league level so I think we're going to see how invested the Dodgers are in Pepio do they truly believe he can be a number three starter at the big league level because if they do this might be a great opportunity to just give him a runway early and take advantage of this opportunity look tony gonsolin we saw him struggle in 2021 he's a guy that throws a split change and then you saw him work on those other pitches and work more of the quadrants of the strike zone and really attack the zone and you saw what happened the following season he made the all-star team so you can absolutely take a big jump and i think pepio is that next guy in line in the food chain. Now, if they want a guy that they think can be solid and they're not ready for Pepio quite yet and they want him to go down and just start games and have him have a bigger role later in the year, then maybe you do go with the Michael Grove. But if the question is, which of the pitchers, if it works out for him, gives you the best chance to win games, the answer is unequivocally Ryan Pepio. He's got more Pepio in his Stepio this season, and I think that he's close to locking down this opportunity. Now, I've seen people out there say Gavin Stone. They're not considered considering Gavin Stone early in the year. That's never really been a conversation they've had. You also consider the fact that Gavin Stone is thrown in just 23 and a thirds innings at the AAA level. Now, he was fantastic. He did post a 1-1-6 ERA and a sub-1 whip, but they're not ready quite yet. So Dave Roberts has already said that Gavin Stone is going to get called up this year. He's not on the 40-man roster yet, so you will see Stone later. But right now, the focus is on who's going to be that number five starter, and I think they're leaning towards towards Ryan Pepio. But I caught up with Ryan Pepio recently from inside the Dodgers clubhouse. Now, unfortunately, the microphone I'm holding did not pick up the audio. So the audio you're going to hear is from an iPhone. I apologize for that. You guys know I'm usually a stickler for the audio, but it's the best I could do for this one. And also probably catch with Pepio in a few weeks. If you want to listen to another interview I did with him, I'll drop that down below in the comments where we talk about his offseason. We talked about all kinds of stuff. So I'll leave that down below. But here's my conversation with Ryan Pepio. It's about that change up. You saw missing bats going in for strikes at Poland, Padres. Kind of, kind of what's the state of it right now? Uh, it was like a, I was there a couple years ago. Like exactly where I wanted to be. So it was continuing to refine it. I'm trying to keep working on it. Um, just keeping it in the zone. Keeping for a good contact in the swing. I saw a big improvement that slider too. How important is that for you? Kind of take your next step in your development. Really just establish that pitch. Yeah, no, I put a lot of work into it. Um, 
get to turn left a little more, more consistent. So just having that extra piece for the uh, goal that will help me get through the line two three times. So just having that good. Yeah, and obviously you had a really nice start, a really nice appearance right there. But I'll ask you, how important is it to not get too high or too low after a spring training start? Um, just try to stay even keel no matter what. I mean, if good or bad, just take a look at your install. Um, coming out healthy is the most important thing. Um, since things start mattering at the end of the month, so um, kind of crazy that's what I'm doing. But um, just taking the positives, building off of those, and then working on some things, and just continue to assess um, just to get ready for the year. Yeah, we just kind of talk about your role, of course. You're right, knocking on the doors that really haven't been their role in the rotation, maybe a swingman role. Have you talked about your role at all? No, I know right now I'm just continuing to build up as a starter, whatever my name is called for it as to do, and I'll be ready for it. So whenever they say Ryan, the ball's yours, go out there and give my best effort. And is there anything now that you've got at that spring training that you're maybe targeting or specifically working on? Um, just continuing to find the delivery. Um, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot with it right now, and then just having that and just execute the pitch and just continue to land strikes with the Awesome. Okay, now we gotta get you out on some fun stuff here. So, I asked some of your teammates of the day. You're going on a road trip. You can pick two of your teammates. What are you rolling, Ryan? Um, I'm gonna roll with Nick Robinson because we rolled together a couple of years. Um, and then I'll pick one more. I'll pick Tony. Well, Tony, Tony. very popular. Yeah. yeah. It's easy. Yeah, I mean, it's super quiet. Chill guy. It's super chill. But the only problem is if he brings his cats, I'm gonna like, need a lot, <laughs> a lot of hours to make it. <laughs> so, we're, we're roll those windows down, right? Okay, so you guys stop at a gas station. My favorite gas station is back. Um, some sour patch kids. Some sour patch kids, those are fire. Yeah, Who's getting the ox? Who's controlling the music? Are we playing some blue combs or what? Uh, if I'm taking the ox, country is playing. It's hot country, whatever is on. Um, I'm listening to the new Hardy stuff. So, um, uh, I don't like to give. I, I don't like the pressure of the ox because I just literally throw it on shuffle and whatever comes up comes up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nick usually a pretty good ox, so I get to know. All right, well, there he is, Mr. Ryan Peppy. He's gonna blow up this season. You don't know, get to know this guy, Ryan Peppy. So thanks for joining us, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.